Hello, hello. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, earlier today I went to the town of Liniere where I went to a donkey fate, donkey fair. Very lovely day. I don't know if you've bothered to watch the video, it goes on a bit too long, but you know, some of you may have done. Um, one of the things I did while I was there, I, I popped into the church and found a statue in there of Saint Solange. And while I was gabbing, I, I said that I would tell you the story of Saint Solange, Saint Solange later when I got home and I thought I ought to make good on that promise because this is a good story. Um, all around this area there are statues of Saint Solange. Uh, there's a statue of her in the church at Martise, uh, which is one of the churches that I visit regularly. And I asked some people, uh, French people that live here, have done all their lives, to tell me a little bit about her. And they all sort of shrugged and said, well, she's Saint Solange. Uh, may we say Saint Solange? They didn't actually know too much about her story. So I, I thought I ought to have a little dibble around and see what I could find out. I've made myself some notes. I wrote it on the back of, <laughs> interestingly, you'll find out why it's interestingly in a moment, a, a card that came out of a packet that contained a pillow to put your head on. <laughs> hmm, something weird going on here. Anyway, Saint Solange. I don't know what each of your views on saints are, or on miracles, or on ancient stories. And I guess it doesn't really matter whether you believe the story I'm about to tell, or whether you think it's one of those grand tales that, that, that only children should be told shortly before going to bed. Uh, yeah, perhaps not. I know some of you some of you have shared with me bits of your background and your religious um, traditions. So I know that some of you really don't go along with the, the sort of Catholic version of, of saints. But I do know that some of you believe in miracles. Uh, those of you that say you're Christians, openly and publicly, you believe in resurrection, you believe in life after death and all that sort of stuff. So just bear with this story because I think it's quite interesting. Saint Solange actually died on the 10th of May 880, which was 1139 years ago. The tradition is that she was born in a town called Villemont, which is near Bourges, or Bourges uh, which is in the same department as Azé Le Ferron. That's why her statue appears in churches around this area. We are told that when she was seven, she dedicated her life to Christ. We're also told that she was a very, very beautiful young woman when she got a little bit older. And she was a shepherdess. Um, I confused someone. Um, I described her as une bergeresse. Well, of course, that's, that's wrong. Um, she was une bergère, a shepherdess. And, yeah, we're told she was very, very pretty. Now, it's never good 
being too pretty. Uh, I know this, you know, I, I get fan mail and people chasing me in the street and such like. Yeah. Um, because she became an object of desire to one of the sons of the Count of Poitiers. Now Poitiers is that way. In the trusty Skoda it's about 45 to 50 minutes drive. I don't know how long it would take on the back of a horse but Poitiers is not that far away. And this son of the Count of Poitiers, he decided that his life would not be complete unless he took uh, Solange to be his lawful wedded wife or his unlawful unwedded concubine or just an addition to his household. Anyway, she wasn't too keen on that idea. Um, one imagines her saying, no, no. Well, he kidnapped her, as you do. And while they were riding off into the sunset on his horse, presumably she was struggling and screaming, no. Uh, as they went through a stream, she fell off the horse. And this young man, in a fit of anger, pulled out his sword and terminated the relationship by cutting her head off. Uh, he used a sword, he didn't use a thumbnail. Now, my experience of life and my experience of terrible accidents and murders and such likes is that when you cut someone's head off, that's it. They are brown bread, no more. Not so Saint Solange. Her head invoked the name of Jesus Christ three times. I've read enough history about the guillotine, for example, to know that Certainly it's possible that muscles in the face will continue to move after a head has been severed. So, yeah, okay, we're okay with that so far, but there's her severed head, invoking the holy name. And she picked her head up. And she walked with it to St Martin's Church in the town that at the time was named after Saint-Martin du Croix. And when she got to the church, that was where she passed away, where she died. Since then, they renamed the town, and the town is now known as Saint-Solange. Now... I suspect that many of you are now thinking not only did Saint Solange lose her head but perhaps Harry's off his nut because our experience of life is that yeah coupe le noggin le tête tombe sur le sol and you are dead end of however those of you that believe in miracles can't say that it's not possible and there is a name for people that do this there's a name for people whose heads are cut off who carry on doing things uh, they are known as cephalophores 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 and 134 recorded cases are in France. Famously, St. Denis, the patron saint of France, he had his nut locked off and he got up and picked it up and walked off. St. Osith, now I don't know much about St. Osith except when my grandmother had a heart attack in the 19. 
70s after they patched her up in hospital or was it her hip replacement? Anyway, she'd been in hospital. In those days, the British National Health Service had some lovely convalescent homes. One was at a place called St. Osith, which is sort of near Clacton in Essex, for those of you that know England. Another saint, Saint, and I'm going to say this as Saint Gemolo, it might be Saint Gemolo, but Saint Gemolo. He um, had his head cut off, and he didn't walk off. Oh, no, 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 no. He picked his head up, got on his horse and rode off. So there we are. That's a little bit of the story of Saint Solange. Local girl, if you are a Roman Catholic, you may wish to celebrate her feast on the 10th of May. If you're not a Roman Catholic, you might still want to celebrate the fact that your head is still on your shoulders and you can celebrate feasts if you so choose. What I'm going to do in a moment, um, I'm going to put up a picture um, of one of the statues of her and I'll rerun the stuff that I shot in uh, linear of her complete. One of the things with statues in, uh, in, in churches, the man that carved it, the man that made it, would have made her to look um, what he would have thought a shepherdess would look like and he may well have modelled her on somebody that he knew. The good thing is that actually shepherdesses didn't actually change their fashion much from 880 to 1880. So it's, it's a good representation of what a shepherdess would be dressed like in her best clothes. So there we are. Anyway, some pictures to follow. Now this is a statue dedicated to the memory of, now being an Englishman I made the mistake and said Solange, but of course here in France she is Saint Solange. <laughs> 